Okay, theoretically, we should be back. We should be better. We should be in more color with brighter sounds and yeah. louder images. These are all <laughs> things that make sense in theory. We're going Clear. to see if we can actually do it. Clear images, indeed. In fact, uh, let us know. Let us know how it's looking. Yeah, folks in the chat, let us know. Great. It seems okay. that we're maybe getting some better quality now. Perhaps our our software just kind of needed to take a little bit of a coffee break. Yeah, you know, um, we are for podcast slash voice actor people and playing with the miracles of video <laughs> excellent cool <laughs> um all right well excellent. let's hop on in um and if for whatever reason things take a turn towards the severely worse again let us know and we'll see what we can do um yeah. but okay where did you guys want to go? The Citadel first. The Citadel. Great. Um, the Citadel, the entire city of Coldwater is sort of contained within an outer wall. But the Citadel, on one end of the city, there's basically this kind of wall bubble that within the wall itself contains sort of this big keep. Um, but there is sort of a portcullis that is raised in from the inner circle of the city, which you can easily go through. Um, and very quickly, you can walk into the building where you have someone sitting at the front desk. Um, this young, blonde, elven woman will look up from some paperwork that she's doing and go, Hello, how can we help you? We um, had an interesting run-in with someone on our way into town, uh, and... Uh, was we... it Bear Holt? No. no. Oh, that's um, a change. Who was it then? Yeah. Moira? Well, it was... Sindran? No, Silvar? It was, a, it was a, a bear-in, and specifically a dead-eye bear-in, um, and uh, the emphasis on the first part of his name has never been more accurate. Oh, and then I decided to shows the uh, the eye patch of proof. One moment, please. Um, and she darts into a back room. Um, and a few moments later, um, what emerges is not her, but a man in this copper-colored armor with this very, very neatly trimmed hair and white beard. He must be in his mid-60s, but he still looks fit as hell and he's carrying <laughs> this very very large sword um and he'll sort of go i'm commander andrew warrington i'm told that i have the three of you to thank for making the roads around this city safer yeah yeah that was us i would like to thank you for making the roads around this city safer if you will submit the proof I'll process your bounty, and that way we can all get back to the busy work that I'm sure we have. Yeah, I hand over Absolutely. the eye patch and any relevant, um, any relevant wanted poster that I that we could prove mm -hmm. to be like making sure he gives us the correct amount. No, 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 uh, we yes. don't need that. There doesn't seem to be a poster for, uh, for Cold River among these. The bounty here was five hundred for him alive, two hundred for him dead. So, we will get you your two hundred gold. Well, that, that's hard to argue with. That's what's on the, the paper. Can I roll? You receive there 200 way to, like, gold. Yeah. Is there a way to like roll to see if he's stiffing us? Is that a... That would be an insight check. Can I insight check? Yeah, totally. To sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. um, 16 plus uh, 4 for a non-natural 20. He wants you to get out of here as soon as possible. He seems very busy and, like, he just does not want you to be here. You also maybe detect just, like, an edge of lack of patience of some sort. Like, there's just kind of something about this guy that seems very tired and, like, he doesn't want to deal with you. But that's kind of what you're picking up. Okay. Just a quick... If, if we take this 200 gold from him, can we... If we go to another town that really hated the Deadeye Baron, can we not cash in, like... 
is is this a one time or are we gonna be like hey we heard that you also hated him dingle dangle no he has he sees no reason to not let you keep the eye patch Hell okay yeah. great yes, sweet yeah gladly accept the yeah the 200 gold yeah 600 gold right yeah that's what i heard yeah <laughs> 200 200 gold it is um, we all know how Cal's even... uh, persuasion. Pause for one moment, <laughs> Emma. You are suddenly very loud. I don't know. I am suddenly if very loud. Changed, but I'm seeing your that audio is... now going into the red. I didn't know if that was just me, um, but that's I'm also very, hearing that. That's very strange because I have changed absolutely nothing. Is that better? I think that that is more like what you were sounding like before. That mm -hmm. is very interesting. Is this better still? I think that yeah, now you're think... a little bit low. I think that you could go back a tiny bit. Okay. Very strange. Great. That sounds about right. That sounds about right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I changed literally nothing. The and mysteries. Of... Magic. Yeah. yeah. Wizard. It was my magic. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Just let me know. Let me know if I uh, start blowing out your eardrums. We will. We will. Okay. Um... Commander Warrington will sort of look up at you all and go, anything else I can do for you today? I don't think so. No, you seem like a very busy man. That I am. Thank you again for your service. And he'll turn to go back where he came from. All right. Right, we can hit some stores. Yeah, let's go shopping. Now we've got 200 <laughs> more gold. <laughs> Now I can't hear. Uh, Satis, I couldn't oh, hear what you just I, said. I, I said shopping montage. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, Mike, it's curious. Your microphone it's seems extremely selective. If you are pointed crazy. right at yeah. it, it seems oh. to like you. And otherwise, it is like... Okay, then I will I will adjust. And I will face it, but not get too close for the loudness. Um, yes. Cool. Uh, all right, well, you now have a little over 500 gold, including the 90 silver pieces that Satis took off of Baron's um, dead body. Where would you guys like to go? I think the should... Eye of the Storm. Yes. Yeah, sounds like yes. a fun place. The magic stuff, because if, if we're going to have to get rid of a witch, I don't know how that would work, but maybe there are fun things. Um, great. So the directions that... Dalon gave you for how to get to this place, take you all the way to the northern edge of the city of Cold River. Uh, around here, it seems to get pretty residential. You're not, you're no longer in a shopping district. You're no longer kind of in the bustle of the center of town, which is why it takes you a little bit to kind of find the store that um, has a sign, a very, very discreet sign that says, Eye of the Storm. And right underneath that, there is a sign that says, do not open door, uh, ring bell, then wait. Very important. Underlined, very important. Speaking of very important, um, on the sign, is the O in storm either an eyeball or like a, a storm cloud? <laughs> yes, it is an eyeball. Okay. <laughs> okay, good. Good. Thank very God. important. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, shall we... Shall we ring? Let's ring. Then go in. <laughs> um, I, I love you, Helena. <laughs> you, ring, you ring the bell. There is a moment where nothing happens. And then there is this sort of very small sort of gust of wind. And then a click from the door. And then a voice from inside says, come in. You can come in now. Okay. Cautiously. Hello. Yeah. So I think we I think we open the door and mm -hmm. and, and I think Helena is probably the one who <laughs> went through the door. I'm gone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Yeah. Uh, no, you With... find a very, very, very well stocked magic store behind it. Uh, instantly, you sort of see a lot of gizmos potions bubbling in various cauldrons, bottles, um, odd objects that seem to be floating suspended in midair, um, what looks like a gigantic dragon skull in the back of the store, uh, bookcases lined with books, other bookcases lined with strange items, um, and 
leaning against the counter in the very center of the space is a half-elven woman, probably in her late 20s, early 30s, um, with sort of this, like, chin-length blonde bob hair, um, and one other very noticeable physical attribute, uh, which is, Beth, what? Um, that she has beautiful pointy ears that are sort of pierced all the way down with a collection of gold and silver rings alternating. So Lovely. They shine all the way down. Excellent. That kind of matches what Cal has. Thanks to thanks to Michaela. That was not part of my plan, but Cal, Cal has <laughs> <laughs> earrings. Yes, she earrings. does. Yes, she does. So uh, this woman will sort of hold up her hands and say, Welcome to the Eye of the Storm. Uh, how may I help you today? What are you folks in the market for? Are you Maeve? The banish of, of witch, a banish a witch, maybe. Yeah, yeah, banish of bad magic. Are you Maeve? I was gonna say, let's take these in order. <laughs> yes, I'm Maeve Blackwater. I'm the proprietor here of the store. Um, Sada, uh, not Sada. What am I saying? This is the DM speaking, not her. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> banishing a witch. What kind of witch? Some more details would be helpful. Also, See, witches are just people that can do magic. Like, I'm a witch. I'm not sure how you would banish me, aside from how would we? the spell Sorry. banishments, yeah. <laughs> which, yeah, I guess you could use. But uh, why don't we start at ground one? What are, you, what are you trying to do? Uh, go Arch. ahead, Helena. Uh, I was just going to say, Sardis, we can't quite hear oh. what I'm sure is a very sensible... No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> take it away. Take it away. I was just going to say I think we should maybe just level with this person because we're facing the unknown a little. We are going on um, a mission from Lady Marwood to deal with something that is happening at her manor, which seems to involve black clouds and possible magic. She cuts and... you off. Got it. You're helping. You're helping poor Atala with that situation. Understood. Yeah. I think that I have just the thing. And she sort of goes into a back room and you sort of hear her um, rifling through something. Um, all of you roll me a quick perception check. All of us? All of you, please. I got 12 plus 5 for 17. This is bizarre. I got a natural 20 minus one. No. You no. no. <laughs> Imagine perceiving something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I got a two. Okay, uh, Cal, you are just <laughs> taken in by all the magical objects in this place. Whoa. You are just, like, you're very drawn in by everything. It's a very distracting, very cool space. Um, Sadis, you... Um, Notice it after a second, but Helena, the moment that you step in, this catches your eye. The space that you are in is windowless. Um, there are no, uh, there's a door behind you that is the way that you came in, and there are two doors on the far side of the store, one of which is the one that Maeve stepped into. Um, not enormously interesting on its own until you remember that the building that you just stepped into did have windows um which seem to have the curtains drawn um so you seem to have from the outside perspective stepped into a house with windows now seem to be in a windowless building oh it's different on the inside hmm. um but mave will return after a moment and pluck a little vial on the counter, which has sort of a dark, smoky texture inside of it. Um, and she'll say, I call it a bottle of sunshine. Um, they seem so darn set on keeping the sun away from the Marwood estate. I say, let's bring some of it back to them as soon as we can. Put a, simply place it somewhere, or unstopper it, or break the vial, and there will be a small orb that sets off effectively natural sunlight there, 
for about an hour. Okay. That's probably good to have. I'd say. Thank you. Well, don't thank me yet. Uh oh. If you were someone off the street, I would charge about a thousand gold for each one of these. Since you're helping Atala, who is a friend and has done me some favors in the past, I'd be willing to let you have one for free. I can give you more, but I think that at that point we would be talking about a thousand gold apiece. What Ewan it sounds is. great, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Or we, uh, oh, there might be a chance for a deal, a bargain of some sort. We could take out some sort of promissory note, maybe, if you're interested in a long-term partnership. But otherwise, you can just have one. Well, hang on, though. I think I'm misunderstanding, because this sounds like a wonderful thing. But we're trying to get rid of the clouds forever, right? Yeah, but this is this this will only last for about an hour? I just want to be clear. Yes, perhaps I misspoke here. I'm guessing, based on what I know, that there may be... That the the clouds above Marwood Manor may not be the end goal of whatever is there. That mm -hmm. may be a way of making the place more hospitable to whatever it is yeah. that they are doing. So bringing yes. sunlight back in, even in a temporary fashion, may give you an edge in certain situations. Um, right. And I th but I think that once you're there, you will need to find what it is that is actually keeping the clouds above that place and find a way to dispel it. That will be on you to sort of take care of that in a more permanent fashion. This will at least give you a burst of sunlight should you need it. Great. Great. Yeah. I mean, we don't have... I don't think we have a thousand gold. Uh... Between no. us, yeah. <laughs> How Maybe much if we did, do you have? <laughs> now, not very much. <laughs> hmm. Uh oh, can't hear, can't hear you, Satus again. We don't have much. Yes. Yeah. 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 I don't think so. She'll sort of say. I could let you have a second bottle of it on credit with an understanding of if you find any unusual magical items or interesting things, you will be bringing them here. And at that point, we may adjudicate what, if anything, I owe you or what, if anything, you owe me. I'm invested in this mission being a success. And I think that if there are interesting magical things happening in that manner, you folks would be a good way of me to be able to learn more. I mean, that, that sounds reasonable. Sounds more reasonable, doesn't it? Yes. Yes. What, what if we don't find anything, though? We would call it a wash. A what? A wash. A, you a know. A wash. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, Oh, I, 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 I am prepared to make this deal. Good to me. Wonderful. Good to me as long as we don't need anything else here, I suppose. Well, one moment. If we're going to do, if we're going to play on that level, she'll take out three envelopes, um, and she'll give you a quill and go. Could you please write your name on each one of those envelopes? I.e., one envelope a piece. I want one envelope with your name. Okay. She okay. points to Cal. Okay. One envelope with your name. She points to Helena, and one envelope with your name. She points to Satis. Okay. Is this anything legally binding? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. We don't need to get the courts involved. Now just pluck a hair from your head and place it inside the envelope, please. Mmm. I'm immediately uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> what is this to do? Yeah, yeah. It's... Well, why? in why? case you say skip out of town after you take whatever is going on at Marwood Manor... I need a way of being able to keep track of you. I need a way of making sure that I can protect the investment that I'm putting down by giving you the second bottle of sunshine. 
I'm willing to go on good faith up to a certain point, but I need to also show, have a sign that you guys have faith in me as well, and that you are intending to, in good faith, come back here to settle the debt. And you would like us to either pay you back or bring you a magical item we might find? If I'm giving you this item for free right now, anything magical that you find there, anything strange or cryptic or mysterious, I would like to take a look at it. I, I think that seems reasonable. It's a little weird that you want hair, but... Uh, would you I prefer guess blood? Get it. We can do it with blood. I have some vials oh, and needles out no, back. No, no, no. I think no, that no, hair no. is usually thought of as more palatable than that. Yeah. I, I don't love it, but I'll do it. Perfect. Sartus? Just to, can we, is, can I do some sort of insight check to see if I know what kind of yeah. magic she's yeah. trying to pull? Yeah, yeah. totally. Um, I don't think that that would, would be insight. Be? I think that that would be an okay. arcana check. Okay. Can, cool. can I do one too? Sure. Oh, we'll do one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Ooh. Helena, you would do it with disadvantage. I... Like, these two guys are professionals in the field. Helena, well, I think, would... It would be a little bit less likely that she would know about... I get a this. 10. Okay. Okay. Professional get... as I may be, I got a natural one. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, I got a 16 plus... <laughs> Deserved. I, I got a 16 plus 2 for 18. Cool. Um... Sadus, you think that maybe she can sell your soul to a demon with this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it's incredibly <laughs> concerning. Um, Cal, you know... Uh, Beth, you also... Helena would not know what exactly she you. intends to do with this. Um, Cal, you know that um, a divination spell, sort of a scrying spell, something that would let someone see what you're doing, is uh -huh. greatly amplified by having something of that person's on hand and if it's something of that person's person that's even better um mm -hmm. so it checks out in a way like if she really is mm -hmm. just kind of coming at this from a place of wow it's been three weeks since those people cleared out marwood manor i wonder why they haven't come to see me let me check out where they are this is something that would let her kind of just like cut through the interference and get a better look at where you are um, there's other less savory things that one could do with this, but yeah. it checks yeah. out. Like, the story that she's saying does stand up to a little bit of scrutiny at the very least. Gotcha, gotcha. I guess um, my only hesitation, what if the thing we find is really cool mm -hmm. and we don't want to give it to her? Does this give her the ability to see what we're seeing and know that we are lying? Or, like, could we try to come back and be like, didn't find anything. It's entirely plausible that the second that you leave the store, she will be running a non-stop scryathon on you. It would take a lot of magic and a lot of spell slots, but maybe this lady has a lot of magic and a lot of spell slots. Mm -hmm. But like, yeah, that is one hundred percent a legit concern, Sadis. Okay, and does she did did she say that she wanted a hundred percent like to have whatever we have, or she just wants to see whatever she we get? She says she wants to look at it. Yes, got it. Yes. Yeah. She sort of says, like, basically kind of, whatever you find, I want to at least, like, come back here. I want you to at least come back here and let me take a look at it. I want to be able to examine it. Um, and after that, yeah. we'll work something out. And that's something maybe you giving her a thousand gold. It may be, mm -hmm. which at that point you will have from sure. um, Lady... Um, Oh my god, what is the correct configuration Al of the letters of her name? Atala. Atala, Atala. yes. Atala. I was about to be Alada, yes. which I was like, nope, that does not yeah. sound Alada. correct. Alada. <laughs> um, I mean, honestly, I would want to run a magic thing we found by her anyway to figure out, like, what it is. So I don't yeah. think it's the worst deal. I don't think... I'm I'm comfortable making this deal because uh, she's... She's gonna... Well, here's a question. Can we once we come back to you? Will you give us back our hair? Of course, of course. Yeah, no. Once okay, okay. once the debt is settled, I will give you back these envelopes. Um, we're going to seal them right now. You're gonna see what I put on the seal so that you can rest assured that it has not been tampered with. Um, I you know if it's all above board, you have literally nothing to worry about. Sounds good. Okay. All right. We're gonna, we're gonna do it. 
she slides <laughs> over two bottles of bottled sunlight over to you. Nice. Okay. Fantastic. Actually, we take we take the bottled sunshine and put it in our pocket, so now we have pockets full of sunshine. Excellent. Yes. I love it. <laughs> Anything else that I can do for you well, fine folks well. today? Um, do you need any spell reagents, any potions of healing, any other things that I might be able to help you with? So we've we're... got four potions of healing yeah. as of now? Four potions of healing, correct. Yeah, I think that's pretty good, plus my healing ability. What is a spell yeah. reagent? I think that this is mostly for wizards, and you might have to deal with mm. it later on, Sadis, but there are certain spells where you do need to have Eye of Newt or something gotcha. thematic on hand to do okay, it. Then um, I don't think you need to worry about it right now. Cool. I I think we're all set unless the two of you have any other questions. No. I... Oh, Helena, I couldn't hear you again. No, I'm all good. Let's go. Okay. Let's let's do it. Beautiful. Alrighty. Um, Maeve waves you cheerily goodbye and says see you all soon right yes yes Bye, let's hope Maeve. pleasure to meet you all take care and as the last of you step out of her door even though she is now back against the counter the door wordlessly and silently just gently closes behind the last of you that exited the store and a moment later there is that familiar sound of that Wow. What was that, Satis? Very strange. Very <laughs> strange indeed. Maybe when we come back, we can ask. Yeah. Any well, other business that you'd like to do in town? Or are we getting underway towards Marwood Manor? Is there anything we would need at the general store? Yeah. I, I think you guys have rope and crowbars and okay. stuff like that. Yeah. Let's hit the road. Yeah. Let's do it. Alrighty. Um, you set out following the directions that Daylon gave you, uh, which are petulantly exacting. Um, they are the <laughs> directions that someone would write for someone that chronically gets lost. Um... <laughs> And for the first hour or so, um, it's a pleasant hike outside. You know, it's the crisp autumn air. It's nice. You're seeing the leaves turning on the trees. You walk past a couple of farms. But the second hour, you're explicitly told that you are following these paths that go into these woods because the Marwood estate is kind of built on the outskirts of these woods that are a little ways out of cold water. And as soon as you start to do that, yeah, you start to notice it. The sky above you is getting much darker. Um, and the trees are kind of taking on a little bit more of a gnarled, twisted quality. Um, eventually, you start to notice your feet splashing underneath you as the ground beneath you is starting to give way into a wetland. Um... And by the time that you're sort of maybe 20 minutes away from where you think the manor ought to be, if you're following Daylon's directions, yeah, it's like it's the middle of the night. The sky has gotten so, so dark. Um, but finally, okay. as you sort of turn around the corner past some trees, you see it. You see sort of the outline of this house a little bit ways away on the other side of a clearing. Or, again, what kind of used to be a clearing. And now there's sort of these pools of water and these brambles and sort of thorny vegetation that has grown there that you strongly suspect the Harwood house estate did not put there. Uh, Emma, were you going to say something? I interrupted you. I was going to say, I was going to say, um... Can, can these lovely folks see, or should I cast some dancing lights that would uh, definitely draw attention to us? Uh, it's pretty but dark like... for Sadis and Helena's non-dark vision eyes, but I leave okay. the question of whether you are casting that spell to you or not, to the two of you. 
three of you. Are you I know how to math. Are you guys? <laughs> I know how to math. Um, are are you guys okay? Do you want me to risk some light or? Lead us and we follow you. I trust you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I guess I'm leading the way. That's right. All right. As you step forward, though, a thing catches your eye in your peripheral vision. Um, dancing above this pool of water are two basically orbs of blue light that suddenly kind of, you know, turn themselves on as you walk near them. Um, and you hear this voice that sort of says, hey, hey, you should come and check this out. It's it, it's amazing. What, the, the thing that's at the bottom of this pool, it's so cool. It is unbelievable. You absolutely need to see it. You have to check it out right now. I need wisdom saving yeah. throws from all three yeah, of you. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah. yep. I got 15 plus three for 18. Cool. Uh, Emma, how much did you get, sorry? 10. 10? Beth, how much uh, did you uh, get? I got a 10 minus one for nine. Cool. Okay, <laughs> Sadis, you, you are just like, that is the <laughs> lamest thing that I've heard. What? No, absolutely not. But then we cut to the Cal and Helena thought camp, <laughs> which yeah. goes something like, Creepy area, dark woods, weird balls of light, saying that there is treasure at the bottom of this dark pool. This is the most legit thing that I have heard in my <laughs> entire life. Let's go. And yeah. you both plunge into this water. <laughs> Um, you know, like, I think that Sadis just starts to shake his head when all of a sudden, like, boom, <laughs> there's two blurs, one on either side of him, as his companions just dive head first into the water and are scrambling towards the bottom. Um, yes. Diving head first is my family motto. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that, Did you say dive in head first? Yeah. Yeah, okay. okay. And the... Two remaining balls of light will sort of briefly angle themselves down as looking at Cal and Helena, and then back towards you, Sadas, and go, Oh, well, that was easier than we expected, but I guess we'll still need to do this a little bit the hard way. And as they attack you, Sadas, I think that that is where we are going to leave it for this session. Oh, uh, no! 20 to midnight. Oh, interesting. Oh, <laughs> yeah. no! Okay, wow. Yeah, at least we're going to get treasure. Yeah, I'm sure this yes, is going to go great. That yeah. <laughs> very, very existent treasure that is for sure there. Yeah, yeah. I know Look. you. Yep. <laughs> Don't even doubt it. For sure. 100% real. Yep. 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 All right. Well, thanks everyone for watching. Oh my gosh. Thank you all so much. Thank you for being here in our first session. Yes. Oh yes. my gosh. Speaking of uh, thank yous, shall I thank the people who are the Day Zero supporters on yes. Patreon? Please yes, do, please. and then we'll do the all credits. Right. Yeah, if I say any of your names wrong, please let me know, but I'm going in order of when people join, so shout out and thank you to Rina Sarame? Karame? Sarame, Rina Sarame. I believe. Sarame, uh, as well as Hordaki, Lauder Bartova, Susan Sendry, Stephen Para, Skylar and Danny, Eva Fri Frieselben, uh, as well as Michael Beck, and Michael. Nick Aman, and Sabrina Balsiger, and Jimmy Alexander, and Julia Nichols, and that is it. But Rena already upgraded to the highest tier right after we started the stream. <laughs> dedication oh, Rena. Awesome. but yes thank you all so much if you go to patreon.com slash 202 midnight so 20to midnight you can see the four tiers that we've got where it's shout outs and then we've also got like bonus audio and video and then seeing a little more into the world building stuff that gabrielle does mm -hmm. as well as extra streams that we're going to do either after sessions or in between sessions um as well as being like a producer where we'll thank you every single episode and you could get access to like the 
full things because I I didn't realize until I was putting the Patreon together. We've been we were prepping for like six months, so yeah. we have like a lot of full. <laughs> we have like, a lot of content. Three hour streams that, that we'll either lightly edit or, or put up at, at a good chunk of, and uh, those are all the things you can act. And I have a to. big binder full of information about this world yeah. and this adventure that will kind of be doling out gradually over the next little mm -hmm. while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yes, thank you all so much, and, and that's where you can find us there for some some extra goodies. And uh, shall we credit it, yes. to Gabrielle? Uh, so this has been Twenty to Midnight, the first episode of our first campaign, uh, the Cavalier Chronicles. It was performed by Beth Ayer, by Emma Sherjarko, by Mike Schubert, and dungeon mastered and adventure designed by me, Gabrielle Urbina. It featured it featured amazing original music by Alan Rohde. And yes, Alan. Beautiful original art by Michaela Buckley. Um, it featured some sound effects, courtesy of our friends over at SoundSnap. And mm. everyone, please check out, uh, check us out on Twitter and Instagram on the everywhere, and check out our YouTube page where we will be uploading the archival versions of these streams. And um, just some scheduling stuff i believe next week we're all planning to be back here just to do another q a mm -hmm. session and then uh the the week after that we'll be continuing the adventure that's right so mm -hmm. we will um at the same time 2 p.m eastern wherever that is where you are in the world um that's that's when we're going to be doing it mm -hmm. beautiful yeah. all righty folks thank you so much this has been a blast and we'll see more of Helena, Cal, and Sadas very soon. I wonder how many of them are going to get out of this pickle. I hope three. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I hope all. <laughs> we might have we might have new characters soon. That's Who right. Knows? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you all so much. This Thank was so you. fun. This is a blast. Thank yeah. you.